Well, I said I wasn't going to talk about Georgia's quarterback situation anymore because I feel like I've basically been talking about it for four years straight. And this year in particular, if there's anybody watching this channel who doesn't know how I feel about what's going on with the UGA QBs and the decisions that go into uh, personnel decisions and depth charts and who plays and when they play and things like that, then uh, there's nothing I can say at this point to make you understand that I've made it as crystal clear as I can. I've even explained it on a third grade level for the South Carolina fans that watch this channel. I mean, the, the only thing more I could do would be to drive to your house with a coloring book and crayons, um, but I'm much too important, way too busy. I've got neither the time nor the inclination uh, to do that. But here I go <laughs> making another video about Georgia quarterbacks. But this is a different kind of video here. I've come to a completely different uh, awakening, realization, understanding, whatever you want to call it. I think we should put JT Daniels in, a, in, in a, a rubber room with padded walls from now until Georgia's 11th game of the season. Just forget JT Daniels even exists. We should start mentally treating JT Daniels the way I've been treating uh, Eric Gilbert for the past two months. I just pretend Eric Gilbert doesn't exist because trying to figure out when, you know, when's or what's up with Eric Gilbert. When's he coming back? Where is he at? What happened? What didn't happen? What's true? What's not true? It'll drive you up the wall. So I had to make the decision for my own mental well-being to just forget uh, that Eric Gilbert exists. And that's what I've decided to do with JT Daniels. I think Georgia should hide him away, stash him away, wrap him in bubble wrap, put him inside of a uh, rubber room with padded walls, lock the door from the outside, have one of those little, uh, little cutouts or like mail slot things that they have in prison, slide him his food in and out every day. And other than that, just leave him be from now until Georgia's 11th game. Well, why the 11th game? I mean, let's be honest. Um, a, a wet sock could play quarterback for Georgia for the rest of the regular season. Georgia's going 12-0 and in the regular season. It doesn't matter. JT Daniels, Stetson Bennett, Carson Beck, Brock Vandergriff, me, um, uh, whatever type of troll is typing 1980 in the comments section right now, anyone could play quarterback for UGA. Georgia's going 12-0 in the regular season. Well, then, Lou, why not keep him out for the entire regular season? Well, you need to be game ready, right? I mean, you don't, you don't want to unlock that door the day before the SEC championship game against Alabama, go in there, drag JT Daniels out, and throw him out on the field Saturday to face Alabama and what will be at that point his first football game in basically three months. No, you don't want to do that. That's not a good idea. Get him out week 11, or, or actually, it's actually week 12, but Georgia's 11th game, which is against a home game against Charleston Southern. Yeah, let JT Daniels come in, play the first half against Charleston Southern, sort of get his feet wet a little, right? Uh, get back used to playing, take him out in the second half, uh, and put whoever else you want in. I don't even care anymore. And then let him play the entire game the next week against Georgia Tech. Probably the two worst teams on Georgia's schedule, uh, Charleston Southern and Georgia Tech. But this will give JT Daniels at least six quarters of game experience heading into the SEC championship game against Alabama, where I'm of the opinion we actually need a healthy JT Daniels to be able to play in order to win that game. I don't see the benefit in, in playing JT Daniels this week against a terror. Look, 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 look. Have you ever seen, you ever seen a plastic pile of doo-doo? Here, that's a plastic pile of doo-doo right there. And I got plenty more coming up for these people on Friday. Actually, let's turn it upside down. Let's just put it upside down because they're a train wreck. Blow dicks is terrible. Uh, how mad, look, how sad is it? Seth and Bennett is so much better than Bo Nix. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Uh, I don't know what I was saying. There's no point in playing JT Daniels. Why? Uh, you know, what's he going to do here? I hate them for all, I mean, put him in a room. Well, we don't know. What's he going to, what's a shaving accident? He's going to be out for two weeks. I don't know. Lap muscle. It just put, get rid of him. Don't get rid of him. I mean, just forget we have him. We don't, we don't need him technically right now to win these games. We're so much better than everybody left on our schedule in the regular season that it's really unfair even at this point. I mean, we just beat the number eight team in the country, 37 or nothing with a walk-on, no-star backup QB who, during his only season of his career that he started every game, which is at JUCO, he led American interceptions. We're just rubbing salt in the wound. We're putting this guy out here. He's beating top 10 teams, 37 out. So put JT Daniels in a rubber room, padded walls, 
don't you know, don't let him move. Basically, don't let him do anything so he doesn't hurt himself. Uh, get him out for Charleston Southern. Let him play the first half. Then let him play the entire game against Georgia Tech. Then we can play the SEC title game against Alabama with hopefully by that point three months down the road a healthy JT Daniels, a healthy Arian Smith, a healthy Don Blaylock, a healthy uh, Karis Jackson, a healthy Darnell Washington, uh, a healthy uh, Jackson Rosamy St. Jack, whatever his name is, George Pickens, Tyke Smith, whatever. All these people, these six, seven starters that Georgia has that haven't played all year, hopefully they'll all be ready to go. And we can go into Atlanta against uh, Alabama with what we thought was going to be our team from the get-go. That's the plan. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. I'm done bitching and moaning and yelling and screaming and fussing and uh, you know talking about Kirby Smart's decision making when it comes to the court. I'm done with all that for this year. Just it doesn't matter at this point. Georgia's defense is so good right now. We're gonna beat the rest of the teams in the regular season. It really doesn't matter who plays quarterback. So why put JT Daniels out there and risk him getting another broken nail or whatever it is that's keeping him out of all these games? Lock him away, rubber room, padded walls, mail slot in the door, slide the food in a couple of times a day. I don't know how often the man eats. Uh, give him whatever he wants, I guess. Put a PlayStation in there, whatever we need to do, and go get him. Let him play first half against Charleston Southern, four quarters against Georgia Tech, and hopefully, 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 <sighs> hopefully have him ready for Alabama. Because it would just be humiliating for Alabama to lose to Stetson Bennett. Okay, that's enough of that. Damn JT Daniels. Can't stay healthy. Not sure what his problem is. It's paper mache. George's got our, well, he's our, our Tua. We have our very own Tua. JT Daniels. We'll get him an injury tent, too. We could go get Tua's injury tent. Well, no, Tua's still using it. He's hurt again for Dolphins now. JT Daniels has not made it through an entire season of football since he was 16 years old. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know. I have no idea. I was getting aggravating as hell, though. That I can tell you. That I can tell you. I don't even know anymore. I don't even know. I would say I don't care, but I do care a little.